Right, here we are again. Going to do a watch along with Who's a Pretty Boy? Only Fools and Horses episode from Series 3. Um, I've got the DVD episode selection on Who's a Pretty Boy? In We're going to play it in 3, 2, 1, play. And there they are, the old London credits. The old London market, which you probably couldn't do anymore. The Only Fools and Horses opening. And the song obviously sung by John Sullivan, who wrote them all well with the rough and the smooth. David Jason, I think that's the first picture he did. Nicholas Linders, the first picture he did for the series. And Leonard Pierce, who he lost in 84. And it's Who's a Pretty Boy, it's just coming up now, Who's a Pretty Boy. Now of course uh, this is the first episode to um, introduce us to the character of Denzel, who was um, a long running character in Only Fools and Horses. And uh, I think this is, of course, the best form of Del Boy and Rodney before they got married. I mean, yeah, I liked it, but, you know. But in these days, and of course, Del and David Jason's doing his proper accent. He sort of slipped a bit in, in Series 6. You listen to him now, in these seasons, up to about Season 4, and then listen to Season 6 onwards. Well, no. Would this be inappropriate these days, we ask ourselves, I doubt it. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying the watch along with me. You can get into it with us. Uh, Karen the Barmaid, never saw her anything much else. She did one season of this and then disappeared. Can't remember her being anything else in the 80s to watch. But <coughs> bloke called Sing won it. Mm, I don't know. Is it harmful, really? Does it matter? Oh, down to your sensibilities, I suppose. Anyway, David Jason here in his stride as Dale Boy. Oh, of course, this, this introduces two characters. This introduces Denzel. Uh, and here is um, this actor, is Gan from Blake 7. Yes. David Jackson, doing an Irish accent, doing a good job of it. I think he was a good actor, this guy, but never seemed to get the role as a giant of a man. I mean, I know David Jason's not that tall, but this guy's got to be 6'4", isn't he? No. Oh. But then, of course, Del Boy's giving it all the bluster. He doesn't care. He's not bothered. <laughs> Genuine Camelaco. Well, of course, there's the joke for you. You love it. Uh, yeah, David Jackson. Now, I saw him in a couple of episodes of Minder, I think. Always playing sort of gentle giants. In this, of course, he's the other decorator. He's going to be... Uh, who Del Boy's going to be trying to do out of a couple of jobs. Yeah, that pub does need decorating because that wallpaper is really bad. <laughs> I mean, even for the early 80s, it's really bad. Of course, no one's smoking in here at the minute, and that would have been allowed in 83, 84, whatever this was. Yeah. Has he got my number telling on? Uh, great. Good jokes, good jokes. Yeah, so this, is, so the, this big guy is more, most David Jackson is most famous for playing Gan in Blake 7. He was in Blake 7 for a season and a half. They didn't have anything for his character, so they killed him off in the control episode, I think. Uh, and here comes Rodders, played by Nicholas Lindhurst. Almost as tall, so he's a giant of a man as well. What do we think? Five, uh, six foot three, maybe, Lindhurst? Mm. I don't know. Looked a bit like Ron Weasley here, didn't he, I think? <laughs> he could be Ron's older brother. <laughs> he could have been, if he'd have been younger, he could have been in Harry Potter. And there's this running thing where he, he don't know how to manage to keep his hands on. A bit out of character for Rodney because Rodney never normally gets violent with anybody. He said for Stephen in the Jolly Boys outing later on. <laughs> and of course they're going to nick the job from Denzel. Sorry if there's some creaking, it's my chair. Never mind. Got to have a rocking chair for an old guy. Dilly doy doy dum dilly dum. Whatever that be. And here we have the wonderful set from the BBC <laughs> for Denzel's Outside of the Flat set. So they put this up just to do this one scene. I don't know why they did that. I mean, you could have just <laughs> used to go to work on an horse. Classic. 
Now you can imagine Grandad papering over a serving, actually. That's perfect, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, these are newbies watch along things I'm doing. So, if, I mean, I try to impart a bit of knowledge, but I'm just having a laugh, really. Um, and I um, hope you enjoy it. You can join and tell me what to watch next. I, I like all the old comedies from the 80s, 90s. Not much from now. Don't mind the in between us, that's good. But of course, now we've all gone to totally PC. There's no way we can laugh at anything anymore, really. Anyway, of course, this episode introduces Denzel and Mike the Landlord for the first time. And there he is, Denzel, played by, uh, God, Paul Barber, is it? Paul Barber, yeah. See, I haven't got notes. I don't make copious notes. I'm going off the memory, which works sometimes and not others. And of course, there's the budgie that will come into this episode very much. And, uh, they're going about this grey paint that Del Boy's obviously got landed with. This this is sort of a throwback to the Yellow Barrow episode in a way, which is another classic. I mean, season two's got some bangers in it. This is season three, so we're building on success. Of course, it's the Leonard Pierce's last season before he's untime well untimely they say, but he died. But he was filmed. He filmed some parts of series four in the wheelchair. You know, but Uncle Albert pretends to fall down the hole. That was all filmed with. The location stuff was all filmed with Leonard Pierce and then he died. And of course they recast and refilmed. They didn't, I mean they created a new character, Uncle Albert, obviously. But here we are, he's uh, Denzel giving those old beers that have actual ring pulls on them that you took off in the 80s. See, when they open them up, you're going to pull the ring pull off and you threw it away. Nowadays you can't do that. They uh, stay attached to the can, obviously, but here we go. As he pops it and it comes off, there we go. Yeah, and he throws it on the floor, which is... Uh, very good man as Dale Boy, what are you doing? And they must have only filmed it once because I can't imagine them filming it two or three times so they can open the can five times. So they must be good, they must have rehearsed. And now of course he's going to put the bread on um, uh, Brendan, the, the Irish painter and decorator, by saying he burned the place down and put Denzel off him so he can take the job home. But if Denzel went to school with Dale Boy, as is later said, what, how does he not know that he was a painter and decorator at some point? I mean, you lose touch with him for years or something. Now, of course, we know that the old boy ruined Denzel's wedding to Corinne. And of course, even the coroner said, so there you go. So there were deaths involved, if, that, if no one knows what that is all about. Which is, of course, a complete lie. With a light blow lamp. <laughs> um... And, uh, yeah, this is the only episode to feature Corinne, because the actress is really good in this, but obviously had her own problems. I think she took drugs and stuff and committed suicide at some point. Don't know how long after this episode, but, of course, she's become the her uh, indoors, like Arthur in, in Minder. You never see his wife in Minder, because she's always her uh, into her indoors. And you see Corinne once in this episode, and she's gone. And, of course, there he is, being convinced... So, uh, Paul Barber and Liverpudley was in, um, what's his other big roles? I mean, he was in the Full Monty film with uh, Robert Carlyle in the 90s. Played by one of the uh, stripper guys in that. But uh, I think mainly known for this. Still with us, I think. Yeah, uh, all these three actors still with us, which is good to say. I mean, David Jason's about 80 odd now, but still with us, still, I think, working. I think. Mean, I don't know, as of 2021, I'm not sure. Covid might put paid to his, um, that was a time stamp on it, didn't it? Talking about Covid, there was one Oh, and there he goes, pretending to be convinced by uh, Denzel, but obviously. <laughs> See, I mean, this is the early 80s, so we have a sort of multiracial cast, in a way. They have lots of um, black actors. And... Uh, they're not treated as idiots or lessers. They're equals. They're all equals, which is... I mean, this is 83, so... You were only just off of bloody... Uh, Beggar Thy Neighbour and all that lark. Love Thy Neighbour, sorry, and Mind Your Language. And here's Corinne coming through the door for the first time. And obviously she had some demons, this actress, but really good in this role. So obviously they didn't recast her, which is weird because... I suppose because they recast the granddad role when Leonard Pierce died. I mean, they created a new character. But um, 
her in, no, she came in, made an entrance, made an exit, and that was the end, really. <laughs> so this is the Am I White thing, which of course, uh, Nicholas Linda is very white, very Ron Weasley. Mm. Uh, Sam Viv Richards, if you missed that joke, was uh, a famous cricketer from the 80s. Try and give it some context for the times. The funny fags, I don't think Rodney ever forgot the funny. I think they phased it out sort of towards the end. But through the first five seasons, really, they would bring that up occasionally that Rodney couldn't get a proper job because he'd been caught in possession of marijuana once, I think. Um, and got an 18 month suspended sentence. Which is love, which is, uh, but then it sort of hung over him all his life, which is really weird. Notre Dame. So here comes the uh, thing which Dale forgot that did the catering wrong, but of course it was the wedding. It was their wedding that he messed up. So obviously she's never going to forget it, is she? Um, lobster, volleyball, game pie. <laughs> Kidneys and saffron rice. <laughs> If it was Rodney's here giving it giving her some help with her uh, buying chips or out for a wedding. All the goods went manky, which means they all messed up in the fridge, they all melted basically. <laughs> and the wedding cake. See really you wouldn't let Dale be anything you wouldn't let him do anything for you, would you, let alone an event of any kind? Girl forgot how can you forget about your wedding day? <laughs> This 80s decor is this thing. I wonder how much time the, what do you call them, the um, designers of Only Fools and Horses would have put into this set. Got that at the 11th hour. Could have been an Eccles cake. Oh, see, I'm predicting a few of the jokes, but then I've seen it so many times. In the 80s, I had it on a VHS tape and would play it over and over. And of course, there's uh, Denzel being uh, suitably chastised. <laughs> Yeah, I like these watch alongs because I don't have to be too informative. I, I used to do the commentaries and all that. And this is a sort of commentary, but just think of me as a friend in your head. We're sitting here together with a glass of Coke, watching Only Fools and Horses together. You just have to listen to me warble on over it. <laughs> with my few nuggets of info. <sighs> I wonder how much... Uh, I don't think they cost a lot of the episodes back in the day. No, I think this would have been a well, mid-season episode. We've got a decent guest cast here, so that would have cut the budget a bit. A couple of sets we had. Oh no, he's still going on about his white thing. He's such a boy, isn't he? <laughs> Rodus. Kunterkin Day was in Roots. It was the original black guy who was uh, enslaved and taken to America, I think. And of course, uh, that's who he's comparing himself, okay, comparing Denzel to. Which, the anemic ghost, so no. <laughs> there you go. The backdrop doesn't look too bad, does it really? I mean, it's obviously a set, but it's not bad, it's not bad. And here they come. They ain't got a serving hatch, calling back the joke where Grandad uh, painted over a serving hatch when he was, uh, when he did decorating. Which is definitely the dopey kind of thing that, uh, look at that old telly. That, God, I used to have a black and white telly in the 80s like that. That's their main telly. <laughs> that wouldn't do for anyone nowadays, would it? It's got to be LED and 50,000 inches. <laughs> Stay out of the kitchen and don't eat the fruit. And there's Dale Boy straight on the fruit. And this is the pre-suit Dale Boy as well. You know, come season six, he yuppifies himself. Yuppies were sort of upper, they thought they were upper class, late 80s types. But, um, so, and Dale Boy sort of thought he was, but, um, in this stage, he's still wearing that sort of Terry McCann look, sort of 80s, not middle-aged man, about town look, I suppose. I think David Jason said he had he bought shirts that were too small, so they would hug his figure a bit to emphasise a bit that he was a slight paunch, slight belly. Now he's on the blower. The old phones wouldn't need that anymore. Would be mobiles. We couldn't do that joke, would we nowadays? Where he's using someone else's phone. Or of course, Del Boy doesn't do any work. He lets. Uh, Rodney and Grandad do everything. <laughs> Ginger Ted, who's living in Australia or something. 
Rod just looking a bit pale. See, they're going to do that joke all the way through this episode. They're going to go backwards and forwards on it. It's a classic. Of course, I've got to feel the episode because uh, you know the problems coming up the MacGuffin. <laughs> the Alfred Hitchcock moment, the thing we need to change, the farce. The farce is starting soon. Because, of course, it's called Australia and it's the middle of the night, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. I think David Jason did dye his hair for this role. And they used a little hair piece for the crowd at the back where he hadn't got any. So of course David Jason was really oh, he'd done a couple of episodes of Porridge but he played an old man, they made him up. When he got this job he thought he was gonna get the old man bounce your shouts, isn't it? He thought he was going for the job of granddad because as in Dad's army, uh, Clive Dunn who played Jones, Corporal Jones, was a younger man playing an older man so he could do the stunts and stuff. I think Clive Dunn was in his late 40s, early 50s when he did that role, made up to be a 70 year old so he could do the more falling about and stuff. And here we go, here comes the MacGuffin. They killed, they think they killed the budgie because Rodney left the kettle on and managed to um, fog the old blaze out. What a plonker, what a plonker. Yeah, so they're now in a quandary as to what they're going to do about this dead budgie, because Corinne already hates the old boy anyway for ruining her wedding. So, um... <laughs> We've got major problems ahead, haven't we? Because we've got to sort this thing out. Accidents do happen. So I think they've only wrecked the kettle at the moment with a big hole in it. But, um, of course, the bird is dead. <laughs> this is, uh, I wonder if John Sullivan was inspired by Monty Python for this. What do you reckon? <laughs> he doesn't look too well. <laughs> He's stone dead, granddad. <laughs> yeah, this could be the dead. It's called the Dead Parrots sketch in um, Monty Python, but I wonder if, because uh, that was the 70s, this is the 80s, so I reckon Sullivan would have seen that, John Sullivan, and he would have thought, oh, I could create an episode around that, so I reckon he complete, he can build this episode around this moment. Shame we can't ask him really, but I'm guessing, because I'm guessing that John Sullivan's one of those writers who would have the end or, the, or a place he wanted to be, like the Chandelier episode and work his way to it, because that's what the Chandelier episode, I remember reading it, that's what he did. He had the Chandelier falling and he wrote back from that. So he's, this is sort of central, centre part of the episode. So I'm guessing he had this idea of killing the budgie and then would work around it. The Turkish bar, so it's great dialogue, I mean, he's really good I mean, as Del Boy. Career defining role, it must be what he's remembered for and will be remembered for forever. I mean, he was obviously did open all hours with Ronnie Barker. Because Ronnie Barker did porridge with him. And, you know, he was sort of Ronnie Barker's apprentice, really, as a comedic actor. The old ten pound note. Look at him. Look. And of course, Leonard Pierce. You didn't really see him. I haven't seen him much, if anything. I think he was a more posh when you spoke to him. He's doing the accent. Yeah, everyone's doing sort of London. Taking all the money. So it's never a good idea, Dale, giving Grandad all the money because he's sort of an old, the sort of older, dementia type version of Dale Boy. <laughs> Write it down for him. <laughs> yellow canary, yellow canary. Don't forget, Grandad, it's a yellow canary. <laughs> and there could have been worse, according to Rodders, but of course, Dale Boy thinks no way. Uh, and of course Sir uh, Rodney at this time, I don't know, he'd done Butterflies, which is a Carla Lane serial about some weird woman and her husband, he played one of the sons. Uh, but he'd go on to do comedies, uh, Two of Us, with Elaine Somebody, which was alright, I used to watch that in the 80s. Uh, and of course Good Night Sweetheart, which is a classic. Now the Dad's Army sort of referencing that might be one of them. 
if you want to do a watch along with one of them with me chappies out there, ladies and chappies, let me know. Give me the thumbs up. Love me. Lombardi. See this guy in an episode of The Professionals. I think it's probably the first episode. Old dogs, new tricks. He plays the bloke that the brother wants to bust out of jail. Don't remember him anything else. Doing a good um, Italian sort of cod accent, I suppose. Although, don't quote me. Might not be bad. There's been a location, the film grains change, so we're outside using the film cameras. You know, so when they're on the set, it's the uh, video cameras that are rubbish that give you that on set. I still, why don't they video grade these so it all looks like this? So it all looks like film, like for Hull and Back, this Christmas episode, where it looks like a movie. Why don't they just do it so that it all looks like this? I mean, every program of the 80s and the 70s, there's this mix of film and blooming video. I mean, it's all Doctor Who, you know, the film a bit outside looks great, and the inside sets look... It's just the filming, it looks crap, the grade's all wrong. How do you change that? Let me know if you can change that below because I want to see if I can alter these episodes anyway for my own personal because I think they'd look so much better if they were all this film version. Anyway, he's off to buy a... I remember Dale Moore gave him 50 quid and uh, Granddad's going to give him 45 so he's going to keep a five for himself. Back then it would have been about five pints of beer I suppose in the 80s. So he's made a profit as well. And of course Grand... So I wonder if they use a proper pet job or they actually... I'm sure, you know, did they use that, the whole picture? Because I know in open all hours, they just made this house into a shop, but that looked like a proper picture. They just used it one day, paid the guy for, you know, just popped out for something to eat at the pet shop, good joke. And of course, Corey wearing the same clothes she wore in, I think she must have had the same outfit on. So he's deflected Corin just about. I mean, she didn't even think twice about it. Probably thinks he's just a crazy old man, which is fair enough. He looks good, though. I'd probably the same bloody budgie, obviously, throughout. <laughs> but, yeah. But he don't talk, though, do they? They do just cheap. <laughs> but, of course, the old boy's happy, but he's like... <laughs> but I think this is one of the little gems of Series 3. One of my favourite episodes of Series 3, because I know a lot of people like the... Slater episode, but that's a one set really bound, you know. And I don't really like the way Del Boy goes off with the posh antiques woman. Like, uh, he acts a bit out of character, and it's a bit of a weird episode, not one of them. See, series three has some really highs and lows because he starts well with homesick and uh, healthy competition, and the one where I've done a watch along commentary for the uh, Friday the 14th, which is probably the best episode of this season. But this is the second best episode, definitely. And I don't like the one where Rodney's called the Peck and Pounds episode. I'm not mad. It's okay, but it's middling, you know. They're average episodes. And the Christmas episode, they're all a bit sort of comedy drama rather than just comedy comedy. So and this is pretty much all out comedy with a bit of drama thrown in. And then, of course, Corrin has returned. I'm guessing they filmed all this in the same couple of days. I don't know what the rehearsal record schedule of Only Fools and Horses was. But, um,. I'm guessing it was pretty tight, probably maybe a week, ten days, because the A's, they just squeeze you at the BBC, you got bugger all money and you got no rehearsal, so you've had to learn the script, it's not rehearsed record like now, you just have to read the day's pages and do it, but of course she's going to twig it, she's going to guess what it is, she's going to guess, and I think you, you may be right Rodney, have a little faith, no, no, no. Don't have any faith in Dale, because uh, even though he had a good... Uh, see, she twigged it straight away on the other end. <laughs> That's been laid an egg, a classic, classic. I mean, Sullivan, Ace Pete, was the greatest comedy writer of Britain, British sitcoms in the 80s. Definitely. This is by far his best work, his masterwork, if you like. And of course, there's the denouement, the... the uh, the truth that it's already it was dead in the morning. That's why they did she didn't want him to go in the kitchen because it was dead in the kitchen. <laughs> and of course Dale Boy now got thrown out, of course. They got they lost the job, they lost forty he lost fifty quid on the deal. So Dale Boy's minus fifty at this point. More Wally. I mean decorating firms give you a free canary, but of course it's the uh, don't go in the kitchen stuff and it just went wrong like all farces which is basically why only falls and horses is the classic farce 
we do British comedy is really at this time and you know until it's sort of turned into the drama comedy but farce is where we are we have to have a problem we have to create the problem we have to get around it in a comedic way which is comedy you know which they don't seem to be able to do anymore in any particular way but soon we'll be getting our next first arrival so we've had uh, Denzel arriving who would return numerous times to create the ensemble of Only Fools and Horses cast, the created cast. And of course, she used the kettle, and the devil would try to charge her for a new kettle. <laughs> of course, even though they messed it up in the first place. <coughs> Played on the weekly. Now, there's a term from the past. Now, I'm guessing they filmed all this on the same day as well. Because, of course, they would have only probably used David Jackson, the Irish actor, for one day, I'm guessing. They don't want to pay people too much, do they? So they'd have set it all up. And I think the barmaids were in the same outfit she was earlier, so it was probably all film. So of course we have the introduction of... Uh... Oh, here we go. And the old boy's going to find out the granddad's also conned him out of a fiver. So, yep, there we go. <laughs> and I think David Jason was doing Danger Mouse at this time, Count Duckula. So if you want to hear the old boy's, the David Jason's voice work, which he still does a lot of. It's all about. I think he did Danger Mouse like Roger Moore, playing Bond or the same, if you like. Pen pilled with Terry Scott. Yeah, see, Rodney's as tall as Brendan, but he can't fight him because uh, he's a coward inherently. Aren't we all? <laughs> all those Dale boys in his And here's Mike, played by Kevin, Mc Kevin McDonald, Ken McDonald. And the first. Scene. And he used to do It Ain't Our Pop Mum. He was one of the characters in that. I think that's a bit too un PC. He never really liked it anyway. About colonial in India and an entertainment troupe, and he was one of them. And he pops up, he's probably been in mind, he pops up in all these things, you know. He's always a bit par player, never really had a star in role or anything. But this is his earliest part, of course. Now Dale Boy's going to play a con and come out on top. Because uh, he's going to get in with the landlord. And of course you'll see Mike, <coughs> pardon me, in every series going forward, until his death. Um, I mean, where they should have ended it was on time on their hands, but um, he died after that and didn't come back for the three final specials, which were really below par. I didn't like them at all. They should have just ended it with them winning, you know, with the uh, winning, uh, you know, winning with the selling the watch. That's where the natural end would have been. So he can get this. So he comes to deal with the great 80s con. He can do it for two grand. Because uh, Brendan said he can do it for a grand. Why would he take an offer of two over one? And we'll find out. Because it's going to cost the brewery, remember, not the landlord or Dell. <laughs> hmm. And here we go with the classic finish. Because remember, Dell boys 50 quid down, and he still wants to get one off of. Um, he wants to win off the, the brewery and he wants to win off uh, Brendan. Would be uh, split up thus, if you know what dispersed is. So the landlord gets 500 quid, Dale will get 500 quid. And what do we do with the grand left? Come on, smart people out there, you know what it is. You know how it is. <laughs> there you go, classic con, the classic Dale. <laughs> And we even get the name of the blooming title in as we go. Who's a pretty boy? <laughs> uh, brilliant. And the rolling credits, which stayed the same throughout. Yep. And I think that uh, David Sullivan would have I think Chaz and Dave were going to sing it, but the, uh, I thought it was Rodney. I thought it was Nicholas Linger singing it. Yeah, yeah, it was all the Kenneth MacDonald. There you go. And Michelle Wynn Stanley being the barmaid. Yep. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching along with me, and uh, give me uh, put down in the comments, and you know, just like me and love me and all that, and put in the comments what else you want me to watch. Classic 80s wise, always open. Probably got the DVD for it or 90s, anything you like, really. We'll go through it. Hey, eh? <laughs> the credits roll. Tony Dell, uh, yeah, I think he went on to uh, do the. I uh, know oh, it was Gwen. Oh, I can't remember. But there's Ray Butt, who Dell boy got his voice off. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I hope uh, you'll listen along soon. Thanks a lot. Take care. Good evening. Goodbye.